Okay, let's look at question 11. We're nearing the end of the paper. So this is where you should start expecting to get a little bit sort of like confused, <laughs> to be honest, but let's see what we can do. So it says, determine the smallest value of k for which this sigma plus this sigma is greater than a million, right? So basically what we need to do is we need to quantify each of these in terms of our formula where we sum a sequence, right? So we can see that we can sum a sequence to infinity there, we can sum a sequence, um, a geometric sequence over there, and we can sum an uh, arithmetic sequence over there. So these ones over here, both of them are arithmetic. If you're not able to see that, don't stress. We're going to look at each of them individually, and then we're going to try to sort it out. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So there's my sigma. It's to infinity i equals 1. K over 2i, well, 2 to the power of i, sorry, that's a little exponent. So let's do it when, what happens when t equals 1, right? It would just equal k over 2. When t equals 2, it would be k over 4, right? And it will continue like that. So we're able to see that our r value is 1 over 2, okay? That's what we're able to see. Our a value is just going to be k over 2. So if we wanted to then sum this, and it's to infinity, right? So we'd say then s to infinity, my sum to infinity of a, so a would be k over 2, so that's my a value. And then we'd say 1 minus 1 over 2, which would then give me k over 2 over a half, which actually just gives me k. All right. So this whole thing just sums to k, right? Over here, it's also important that remember when we sum to infinity, you, um, when you use this formula, you need to make sure that your r value is between negative 1 and 1, which is the case for us, so no problem. So we sorted out this first sigma. Sigma is just, it just means the sum of, right? Let's do the second sigma over here, right? This one is not to infinity. Okay, this one's only to 10, so I'm thinking we should use this one here. So let's see if we can do that. So t to the 1 is just going to be 2 to the power of 2, which is 4. Then t to the 2 is going to be 2 to the power of 2 times 2, which would be um, 2 to the power of 4, which is effectively 16. Well, effectively, it is 16. Okay, so we know our a value is 4, and our r value is also 4. How did we get our r value of 4? We said, well, 16 divided by 4, which gives us 4, okay? So now let's sum it into, sub it into this s to the 10. Why am I saying s to the 10? Because we see here that it goes from 1 to 10. So I'm summing over 10 terms. So it's going to be 4. My um, r value here is 4 to the 10 minus 1 over 4 minus 1. Okay, put that into your calculator and you should get a value, a really large value, which you should expect, right, of this. Okay, so that's fine. Remember, the only restriction on this formula is that r can't equal 1, so that's not a problem. Um, and that restriction is even given on your um, formula sheet. So now we have, we have values for our two sigma notations, right? So now we have that and we want it to be greater than a million. So we want to get k by itself, so bring this over, and it means that k has to be greater than 398,100. Okay, right? So, so that's quite important. It says, but then it does say that it needs to, it says determine the smallest value of k for which this, these two here, are greater than a million for k element of integers. So we know that k has to be greater than this. What is the smallest number that is greater than this? It would be 39899, because it's an integer. So it can't be any, any sort of like decimal, etc. So the smallest value that would satisfy this specific criteria would be that k equals 398099. It can't equal 100 because it is strictly greater than, but the, the number that is smallest but still greater than this is this, and then you are finished. Okay, so work very methodically. With these questions, you have to break them down, otherwise you will panic, 
right? You need to say, okay, what is it that I know? What is the formula that's applicable, etc. Let's do the next question now. It says, consider the following arithmetic series. So now arithmetic series, what are we thinking? We're thinking a common difference, okay? So we're not thinking ratios anymore, we're just thinking a common difference. Just determine the number of terms in the series. So we could say, well, we want to find n. That's what we're wanting to find. And we know that tn equals a plus n minus 1d. Don't freak out, right, if you don't know this. It is on your formula sheet. I just, I just know it off by heart in my head. Right, there it is there. You need to just know that that is the case. And let's work out n. So we know our a value is 5, it's easy enough, right? And our d value is our common difference. So in this case, the common difference would be 15 over 2 minus 5. If you put that in your calculator, it's 2.5. So let's sub that in. So we have a equals 5, we have n minus 1, 2.5. Um, and what is the tn, what is our, our, our largest value in the sequence? It is? 505 over 2. So now we're going to go and we're going to go simplify this algebraically and we're going to figure out what is happening. Okay, so these two here, right, 5 minus 2.5 gives me 2.5. So this is then just going to give me 500, um, 2.5 in. Right, sorry, that's still over 2. Right, if you divide that through, then n equals 100. Okay, so the number of terms here would be 100. Good. Right, so that is that. It's, it's very important here that you are able to see what needs to be done and what, what formulas you need to use. Now, last question for question 11. It says, calculate the sum of the middle 30 terms of the series. Which series is it talking about? This series, okay? So now, if we have 100 terms, we have 100 terms, right? We want to get the middle 30. So we know that 100 minus 30 equals 70. 70 divided by 2 gives me 35. So I know that I go... 35, 30 in the middle, then 35. That's what I know, okay? So we know that from term 36 to term 65, that is our middle 30 terms, okay? So effectively, we are splicing up our series um, and we are saying this is a new series that we're going to look at, okay? So we have T36 to T65. That's what we're interested in doing and we want to sum across those. So let's go work out what T36 is, okay? What was our A value? We said, let's just jump across. Our A value was 5 plus N minus 1, which is 36 minus 1. And what is my D value? We said it was 2.5. Okay, let's put this into our calculator. 5 plus 35, that's 36 minus 1, times 2.5. So we have that T36 equals 92.5, okay? And effectively, this is our new A value because this is the new series that we're summing across, okay? So we know that that's our A value. Our D value still remains the same at 2.5 because it's still going up, right? And we know that our N value in this case is going to be 30 because there are 30 terms in the sequence. So now if I want to sum over these 30, I'm going to go and I'm going to say, okay, what is the sum of an arithmetic sequence? It's this one over here. So we're going to say 30 over 2, okay? Then I have to say 2 times A, which is 92.5, plus 30 minus 1 times by 2.5. So what am I doing here? I'm literally summing it into the sum of an arithmetic. I said there's 30 terms. My new A value is 92.5. My D value stays the same. I put this into my calculator. Okay, so it becomes 15 times by two times, I mean, into the bracket, right? Plus 29 times 2.5. And your answer there is 
the sum of the middle 30 terms sums to 3,862.5. 3, okay, so this one was a little bit more higher order thinking because you had to splice it up, right? So you, you could think it was some of like your stats thinking, etc. But just following that little sort of logic that I put together, you'll see that this is what they're talking about. Okay, two questions left and then we're done.